Good morning. It is time to spit the BS. It's time for Undisputed. It's time in just a few minutes to talk Coach Cal called by the Hogs. Anthony Davis's eye injury, nothing to blink at. Is there a doc in the house for the Bucks? And Bronny now expected to go back to school, really? But first up, I say good morning to Keyshawn Johnson and especially to Rachel Nichols. Thank Welcome you, back. Good morning Great there, to Skip. Have you. How are you, sir? Good. All right, but first up, we must discuss what surely will be the most watched women's basketball game ever, featuring all time leading scorer versus 37 and 0 team. Doesn't get better than that. And Kaylin Clark did score 30 points, but only 12 of those and one three came after the first quarter. As South Carolina inevitably wore down and out Iowa 87-75 to finish the season as 38-0 national champs. South Carolina predictably won the boards 51 to 29 with 18 offensive rebounds. And South Carolina's bench outscored Iowa's, you ready for this, 37 to nothing. I'll say it again, 37 to nothing. Now, Iowa did cut it to five and had the ball with four minutes left, but Kate Martin turned it over, and South Carolina closed the game on a seven to nothing run. And that was that. And afterward, let's hear what Caitlin had to say because she expressed no regret. South Carolina is just so good. Like, there's only so much you can do. I mean, Cardoso has 17 rebounds. They have 51 as a team. We have 29. Like, hard to win a basketball game like that. You basically got to shoot perfect at that point. They're a really good team. So, like, we knew they were going to go on runs. And by no means, did when we started off as hot as we did, do we think we were going to be able to hold that lead? Like, that's just what good teams do. And um, I think. If I'm not mistaken, like there's some crazy statistic where South Carolina just outscores everybody in the second half by a bunch of points every single game. True. So, Keyshawn, start us off. What exactly happened to Caitlin after that all-time great 18-point first quarter? Well, she went five for 20 from there, mm. right? You think about that. <laughs> yeah. That, that's adjustments, though. That's Don Staley and that's the defensive staff putting the, some clampers on that and saying, hey, you got your 18 in the first quarter. We're not going to allow you the rest of the game to do these sort of things. Now, she missed shots. She missed open shots. But she they did. were crowding her. They were passing her off. They was making the necessary adjustments and harassing her. Skip, look, you can't continue to go on a run the way that she has when you don't get the help from your others. And I mentioned this to, to you uh, last week when we talked about her. She's going to get hers. But everybody else, what about everybody else? Everybody else has to chip in. They chipped in against LSU. They didn't chip in against South Carolina. Okay, so that's one of the main reasons they lose this game. On top yep. of South Carolina, been there, they done it. It's a kind of somewhat of a veteran team with transfers there. And Don Staley, let's face it, she knows how to coach. She's not going to allow the things that happened against LSU and what Kim Mulkey did, like just leaving <laughs> this particular individual and you got her. Don't, you know, you take care of her even though she's cooking for 40 plus points. And so you make these adjustments, and this is basically what happened at the end of the day. They did a great job defensively, and, you know, partly she missed some shots, and they just never got back into a rhythm. That's the way I saw it. Okay. I think you could see the wear on her, right? So the physical wear, okay. She is a focal point of the defense, not just yesterday, but certainly on Friday. I mean, UConn gave her, UConn gave her everything. So to have two times in, what, 45-hour period, where you have that much yep. physical sort of mm -hmm. beating up on you and, and people coming at you, I, I think you could see by the second half, she's four for 14. She's one of seven from three. That one of seven number, though, to me, is also about mental wear and tear. Having to be the person who carries the team, who frankly has to carry all of women's basketball is the position we've put her in a little bit unfairly at this point. And knowing just from a basketball standpoint, if she doesn't catch fire, if she isn't electric, if she isn't 18 points in the third or fourth quarter, they have no chance of winning. You heard her after the game. That South Carolina team is so deep. They're so good. They have a center who is you know, nearly a foot taller than everyone else on the floor bringing those rebounds down. She would have to be superhuman for all four quarters and mentally that is just an incredible weight to carry so to me I saw her pressing in that yes. second half I saw her taking some of those three-pointers just hoping to make it up on the scoreboard and that is the weight of someone who knows it's all on her and by the way it was and she wasn't superhuman and that's okay the, the South Carolina team is just so exceptional you have to look at what that team did it is an all-new starting five yes that's crazy to go undefeated win the title 
have freshmen coming off the bench to change the tide of the game for you. That is just such a complete, deep team. And key to your point, Iowa didn't have that. True. Okay. So I'm first going to congratulate South Carolina because I thought they were extraordinary all year long. And this was, as Raven Johnson said after the game, the end of their revenge tour. <laughs> And I was happiest for her of all the South Carolina players because if you remember what happened in the semifinal last year, Caitlin Clark just flat out disrespected her. Mm -hmm. And she was at the top of the circle with the ball and Caitlin just backed we off into the lane and just said, just go ahead, just go ahead. Remind me of what Pop used to do to LeBron <laughs> back in the day. Yes. He used to just wave and say, just let him shoot yeah. that. So here she is and she just waving at her and it crushed Raven Johnson's spirit, and she said after the game, or after, after last night's game, that she actually thought about quitting basketball because it got so bad. I still think all these these young players read their social media responses too much, but it just ate her alive. So this whole year for her was a revenge tour to get back to this moment. And to Keyshawn's point, yeah, they switched off some players, but for the most part, I'm going to say 75% of the time, Raven Johnson took Caitlin face to face, sort of throat to throat, here we go, and flipped the game on its head right at the end of the half when she stole the ball and went all the way down for a little layup yep. that, that suddenly I look up and I said, wait a second, South Carolina is up by three at halftime thanks to her. So I mostly congratulate her because she deserved this even more than the rest did. Mm -hmm. So the, the rest of the story was, as I said Friday, look, South Carolina's just too big for them. Yes. And Hannah Stolke played huge against LSU, and I thought she played big on Friday night, but she did not play big yesterday because, to your point, uh, it's hard to play wait big. a second, <laughs> uh, Cardoza. Camila Cardoso is <laughs> like a foot taller than she is. She's actually 6'2 to 6'7, so it's five inches that she was giving up. So Hannah Stolke gets three rebounds yesterday. It's just not enough. You are going to get annihilated on the backboard, and you're going to give up way too many offensive rebounds. Okay, now back to Caitlin. Three versus 17. That ain't it, it's just, it's just a my math is correct. <laughs> it's a complete mismatch. That's a, a okay. different number. All right, so now I'm going to treat the women's game just the way I would treat the men's game because they have earned the right mm -hmm. to be criticized, if you will. Like, that, this is my highest form and, of regard and respect. Yes. I was disappointed in Caitlin, and I give you the tired excuse because she deserved it, because she plays 40 minutes every game. It's ridiculous because they have no bench. 37 to nothing, they got outscored. And I'm looking down the bench, and they, they went with um, fewer Bach. I, I didn't think she even played for them, and suddenly she's getting minutes because they need somebody because the two freshmen are coming in, as you point out, for South Carolina, and Tessa Johnson just raining threes. And Full Wiley just looks explosive. I'm, I'm saying, well, the, I was got nothing to deal with that. So the point was, yes, she, she wore out mentally and physically, but I just expected a little bit more because she, she, she's, she's been it all year. And I thought, okay, it is the last game. She knows it's the last game. It is, it's a tough turnaround because it's from late Friday night. And they, they started at this noon out here in the but Pacific not even, time not zone. Not even the UConn game, though. Skip, you can yeah. go all the way back to a week ago, the LSU. You yeah. still had to muster up energy regardless yeah. to what LSU you beat them. Absolutely. But you still had that energy you had to get through to get to UConn from UConn to get to South Carolina. That mental fatigue over those three games. Okay. But again, some people, many people were making the GOAT case for, and we'll delve deeper in this in just a few minutes, but... I'm watching like after 18 in the first quarter, It, I, I'm not sure you can get much better than what she did in the first quarter, right? Yeah. I mean, were you not impressed? I, I was just score like- 18 points in an entire <laughs> two games. I, I sat back and I said, this, this is all time, all time. And surely I didn't think she could sustain that. But to your point, the rest of the way she goes five for 20 and the rest of the way she goes two for nine yeah. from three. Yeah. Are your legs heavy, or is your is the weight on your brain heavy? Is is you get all deeper? of the above? Yeah. Skip, when you're in those situations, like Rachel said, it's the, the mental fatigue, the stress level. You carry in the the women's basketball. You you're trying to reach for, you're trying to accomplish a lot, right? You're trying to win your first national title. You're trying to show those that doubted you they're wrong. You you're trying to also ball out to to they claim that. 
that goat status. I mean, all of that. You don't think that that young lady is going through those things in her mind the sure. night before the game? Of course sure. she is. No, 1, I got 1,000%. And, and also, just, you have to think about the mountain in front of her, right? She would have had, wait, we're joking, hey, you didn't expect her to score 18 in every quarter, right? You're on pace for 72 points. <laughs> but that's kind of almost what she would have I, had to do, I, right? I understand. Have, that is true. You have a team that was getting into this game favored by seven. Mm -hmm. They weren't favored by two points. They were favored no. by seven. True. Think about what Caitlin Clark would have had to do to beat a team like that. And it is a credit to her that you sat there in front of your team thinking, TV, thinking maybe she could do it. I don't maybe. know, especially after that first quarter. I didn't expect 18 a quarter, but I might expect nine a quarter from there on. I, I no. feel like if you ran 100 simulations of that game, South Carolina is winning, You're probably what, 70 right. of them? And okay. it's a credit to Caitlin Clark that there's 30 that she isn't, but it's still more likely South okay. Carolina But I win. reiterate, with four minutes left, mm -hmm. They had cut it to five and made a stop and got the basketball back. Uh -huh. And at that point, Kaylin looked gassed to me because she didn't want the basketball. And Kate Martin's her close friend is looking at her like, really, you want me to go? Yeah, yeah, you go, you go. And Kate Martin dribbles into an error and yeah. lost the basketball and that was it. Because then South Carolina said, that's enough of this. And that was that. And that was the end of Caitlin for the rest of the game. So my only point is, I thought maybe Caitlin would reach down. Keyshawn, you know how that feels when you're, what's the old Lombardi line that we've talked and talked about? Fatigue makes cowards of us all. But right. you reach down and you just say, fatigue, go away. I, yeah. I'm not a coward. I want the basketball. I'm just going to suck it up, muster it up, reach down for one last little piece of magic. Because she can be magic when she wants to be. And I've seen her do this again and again and again late in games. And she just wasn't home anymore. She well, wasn't maybe, there. Maybe she was trying to preserve that 42% from three. <laughs> maybe. Is that what she was? No, but that's the, that was the skip LeBron. And that's did. exactly what he did do. And that's what he I continued love you, to man. do. That's no, what he you, continued you, you to do. You can. By the way, LeBron last night had that early April flu. I don't know what it was. It was something. I, I, I mean, they sent him home. He came. Yeah. He showed up. He tried to play. They but, sent him home. But, Skip, you, you're right, though. There's something at late in games that the competitiveness kicks in you no just, matter how you feel. But you don't dig you think deep. she got too competitive at the end? I feel like at the end she no, was but pressing. I, I, but what Skip is saying, Skip is saying that, that nobody else touches the basketball with these four minutes right, to go right, except right. for me. I clear out, I'm doing it. I, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm just going to do it. Even if it's slow, okay. I'm going to get there. Quick right. point of order to this. After the first quarter, she did not shoot a free throw. She shot six in the first quarter and made five of them. She didn't shoot another free throw. So I'm just saying there's even a way. She just puts her head down because she's got first just step go. quickness. And just mm -hmm. go and try to try to foul somebody out or get to the free throw line somehow to score some point, some way, where you just suck it up and say, I'm going to do this. And, and, maybe, and, and maybe she just thought her teammates at that moment in time could step up and take some of the load off of her. That's, you know, it's a lot of different ways. As they say, she's making the right play at that time. And hopefully they would step up and hit those shots and not That's rely right. on her to do everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, listen, when she does get in the lane and kicks it to Gabby Marshall or to Kate Martin, they usually, you can just see it in their eyes like, thank you, I got this. Yeah. But she couldn't create because they had run her into the floor. And yet, after the game, I was a little surprised because... You know how, quote unquote, killer competitors get. I thought she might sit up there and just shake her head and pound the table and say, we had them and we let them off the hook or something to that effect. And I got nothing but we are so proud of ourselves, which is cool because she had the weight of the world but on her shoulders. they really didn't did have them, though. Yeah. Even though they cut the lead down to five. But they really I just didn't thought have maybe them. she didn't wouldn't. No. I, I thought maybe she wouldn't give in to it and she'd sit up there and shake her head and say, I let my team down or something to that. But she just wanted to talk about the magnitude of their achievement because her point was, whoever expected Iowa to get to one Final Four as opposed to two straight Final Fours and to the championship game. Wow, okay, twice in a row, okay, well that's great. But is, that, is it time to celebrate that at that moment? I wouldn't have, but that's the way I look at it. And I was just a little surprised but by her. For University of Iowa yeah. in women's basketball, I'm okay with them celebrating that because they yeah. may never ever get there again. <laughs> they might not. They may. It, it's I'm hard, just saying man. they may never ever get there again. How many? How many Caitlin Clarks are running around saying I'm going to Iowa? <laughs>
I mean, like, no, I'm serious. Well, to, a better point is how many Caitlin Clarks are running around, period. In general, though, right? you know, when you think of top, what was she, a top four recruit yeah. in her class? Yeah. She, but top Paige, four. Pa Paige Beckers was the first. No, I'm right? saying yeah. she's a top four, mm -hmm. so she's somewhere in that, depending on who you are, she's you're going to ask her. Yeah. She yeah. could be two, she could be three, she could be four. They're not going to Iowa, man. I hate to say Unless it. Unless they grow up in They're West Des Moines. West is, Des Moines. I'm, I guarantee yes. you there is some seven-year-old girl out that, that there in be, Iowa today who has been today. watching that Kaylee Clark. That true, and Rachel. Rachel. But, but that, they're it's thinking take a long time about South get Carolina, there. <laughs> LSU, Stanford. I mean, that's I'm what they are. Let's be honest with each other. I agree. You know? See, but, I, I think that in that, in that fourth quarter, Kaylee Clark was trying everything. I think she was kitchen sinking it. I think okay. she knew, you know, when she sat up there after the game and read off those rebounding numbers and said, hey, think about what it would have taken to make that yeah. up. Yeah. I think that gave you a real window into her fourth quarter mentality. Okay. I think that told you that she is sitting there going, okay, I, I can't play center, right? I, I can't play Although every position. Although she did lead them in rebounds. I, Go ahead. But, but yeah. she can't, I mean, you, mm -hmm. can't, you cannot play every position, nope. right? And we would have mm -hmm. called her a ball hog, and we would have said she wasn't playing team basketball. I, I okay. wouldn't have in the fourth quarter because she's Caitlin freaking Clark, and but, she's the greatest scorer in the history of women's basketball, but that's just me. Right, but I think she right. knew, yeah. right, the rebound disparity. I think she knew how many points had to be made. So first, she's taking what I would say unadvised threes at certain points. I think she was checking. <laughs> no, but we've been saying that all year. Checking the ball up like, in places. In the first quarter, she took a couple. I said, that's just ridiculous, and it went in. It wasn't the distance. Yeah. It was yeah. that they were too strong. Right? Yeah. Where was she hitting? It wasn't that yeah. she. It wasn't that they were falling short. She was sometimes hitting the backboard or the back of the rim in a way where the angle was bad, and she, you knew it was going to pop right back out. Right. Yeah. So first she's doing that. Then she's trying to pass the teammates. Great. If the if the defense is collapsing around me, I'm going to pass the ball. That didn't work, as you point out. I, I just think that at, there is a point where she sort of saw the overwhelming force in front of her. And there just wasn't a way through. And maybe you're right. There would have been some nights, you know, three out of ten. I, I can't do the math. But but some nights where she could have just exploded for another 18 points in the fourth. But it wasn't likely that was going to happen. We can't judge her against that's the standard. That's the most likely thing. And why didn't you measure up to yeah, it? I but that was the most unlikely thing. And it didn't happen. I okay. never, for one, as you know, Skip, thought that Iowa was going to beat South Carolina. Even if she had 60 points, for some reason, they was going to score more. That's just they had a You're deeper probably right. had a deeper team yeah. and a better team. Okay. It's just a it's just a much better team. But if you told me that Caitlin Clark would go two for nine over the last three quarters from three, I'd say this is a twenty-five point game. And they had the ball down five with four minutes left. I still don't even know how they did that, honestly. It's like ridiculous that they even had a prayer of a chance, and it was a prayer. And to your point, if she had come down and hit a three at that point to cut it to two, I'm pretty sure South Carolina would have said no, mm -hmm. no, Came no. Came back, hit a three, put it back to five. Uh, yeah. yeah, like, God, they were bombing. They had a better three-point shooting for uh, percentage for the game. They shot 42% to 39% for Iowa. So... How can you beat them when they, they outshot you from three? And, and the bench, too. I mean, you kept saying it, Lord, the bench number. Mercy. 37 to nothing. 37 When the bench nothing? is outscoring your bench 37 to nothing, if you're you Caitlin Clark, I, I if you're Caitlin you Clark, how, again, now she's got to be the bench, too? I, I mean, yeah. you cannot ask one person to do that much. No. And, and I just think that, that you look, you know, South Carolina likes to say we don't have five starters, we have ten starters. This is a credit to Dawn Staley, the way she has prepared that team. She has consistently taken freshmen through her time at South Carolina and prepared them to play at this elite level sooner than any other, other coach in the country has been able to do. And we saw that. I mean, you mentioned Phil Wiley. She, she came in and changed the energy of the game. And, and they told a great story on the broadcast about how Dawn mm. sat her for a game game in the middle of the season to sort of get her head straight about what she would need to do at this level. That is preparation in what? I mean, I don't know exactly what month. It was at December, whatever that yeah. was, to get into April. And, and that is the kind of coaching job John, Don Staley was doing. If you're Caitlin Clark, at some point, you can't overcome every single one of those yeah. barriers. I, I guess it's because I'd watched South Carolina consistently through the tournament, and they they didn't steamroll. They, they had some close games, and I thought, well, maybe – Maybe they just don't click down the stretch. Maybe there's an opening here for No, what happens is you get complacent. I'm much better than you. Mm. So at the end of the day, no, that's what it is. I agree. I'm, be I'm better than you. That's we're better than you, and we're not going to always beat you by 40. It's going to be because we're we're cruising along. We're not, And that's why Don would be so aggressive and, and mad at them because of that, not finishing the deal, keeping people too close to you. And you're a much better team. Now, 
you in the championship game and you 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 play against NC State, you just wipe them clean off the floor. It was that, ridiculous. It, yeah. it was a yeah, it was a wasted watch. Mm -hmm. Other than I like to watch it because of uh, South Carolina and Don Staley, but other than that, it's a wasted watch. And now you look at this national championship game. They elevated everybody, elevated to the next level. As you said, the bench as well as the starters, all ten of them, they elevated to the next level. If they, if you rewind and you go back to round one or round two, they like they gonna coast through that. That's mm. it. even if they even if they would have played Iowa in the first round or the second round, it would have been a tight game and they would have coasted through it. They probably still would have won, but they would have mm -hmm. coasted through it because they would feel boring. I'm yeah. bored. I don't, I'm, I'm going to beat you anyway. I think that's how they felt against Iowa a year ago in the semifinal. Probably they thought, so. ah, this is nothing. Yeah, right. We got happened. this. It and happens. all of a sudden, you don't got this because she was spectacular. And at least you had the revenge motive this time, so you had your eyes wide open. And she still almost closed yeah. your eyes in the first quarter, right? I mean, it's... Kaylin Clark played exceptional basketball all the way through this tournament. I don't consider her any kind of failure in any way. No, she couldn't no be failure. an She's undefeated team. I, I just, I, <laughs> that, look, just th this is the magnitude of her. I was just a little disappointed. I just expected maybe fun, a right? last bit of magic from her. What Time to go fun? get that five million from the big three and keep hey, pushing. Hey, that might be <laughs> the way to go. And by the way, speaking of Dawn, we'll get deeply into this a little later in the show, but. Would, should she take an NBA job? And I'm looking at what she's got coming back next year, and she loses Cardoso, but that's all she loses. And I think they are so loaded. Yep. Uh, could they go, here we go again? Could they win it again? I wanted her to come coach the real USC men. But, really? You know. Hmm. Oh, well, that's hmm. interesting. Okay. Too late. Too late? Were you pushing behind the scenes for that? <laughs> no. no. Oh. Alumni calls. All right. Okay, now we got to get to the hottest story of the later night yesterday.